everybody. I just wanted to do a quick little video um, on how to get set up with Zoom and how to use it to teach a class since we're going to be doing that for a while now. Um, there's a kind of a difference between just using Zoom to join a meeting or like have a conversation with people, um, kind of like Skype, or using it to actually teach a class. I have found that there are some skills that are specific to using it as a pedagogical tool that I'd like to just address. So we, we start out by going to, if you look up here in the address bar, virginiatech.zoom.us. That is where we're going to be here. And when you press enter, it pulls up this right here. Okay. Now, what you want to do, you don't want to click any of these buttons um, here. You want to hit download client. What that's going to do is download a little uh, program to your computer called the Zoom Client for Meetings. You want that if you're going to be teaching because you need to be able to um, easily access files on your computer and do lots of other things that the program that you install to your computer will do that the website will not do. So you can actually use Zoom just from this website and you get basic features and things like that. But from experience, I'll tell you that using the downloaded client, installing it to your computer and going about it like that gives you a lot more flexibility and power in terms of using it as a pedagogical tool. So um, we're going to download the client and then that'll just download this little tiny program on my Mac. It looks like this right here. It's up in my, um, uh, let me um, see if I can move this this way. Where can I, how can I move this? I'm trying to move my little screen. Um, I guess it won't work. Okay, so it just shows up in my in, on my Mac once I've downloaded the client for meetings and installed it and, and gone through the whole installation process. It shows up in my toolbar at the top as a little logo that has like a video camera in it. And when I click it, it gives me this little menu right here but I need to sign in. Now this is really um, crucial to getting this right. So anybody can sign up for a free Zoom account and it gives you basic features and you can have like just a couple of people in a meeting and you can hold a meeting for about 30 minutes. Obviously a 30 minute time limit pretty much makes this pointless for us teaching. So the nice thing is with a pro account, which Virginia Tech gives everybody as a pro account, you can have an unlimited meeting time and you can have unlimited people in the room and you can also create unlimited number of meetings. So it's really important that we sign into our Virginia Tech Zoom account um, so that we get all of those features. Okay, so um, so um, we're going to sign in and it brings up this little lo this little thing right here. Now, what you want to do, this is the important part. You want to click sign in with SSO. SSO stands for single sign on, and that is where it will link it back to your Virginia Tech account um, using your Virginia Tech, your Hokie ID login. So we're going to click sign in with SSO. And I had to ask somebody with, um, I asked Tiffany who has a PC, and she said that the login screen first asked her for the company domain. And if you look right here, the company domain, um, instead of typing your email address in, uh, you'll type in Virginia Tech, all one word, and that becomes virginiatech.zoom.us, which is exactly the same location that we went to download the client in the first place. Okay, so in case it does that, you'll know what to do. It asks you to put in your email address. You just type in your VT email address. If it asks you for company domain, you type in Virginia Tech, all one word, all lowercase. And if you notice, what that's doing is it's completing this domain name. And then you type in your VT email address right here and hit continue. That's going to open up a web browser. Okay, and then finally what happens is it pulls up with this. You notice here we're at virginiatech.zoom.us. It has the Virginia Tech logo up here, and then it's asking me, this little dialog box pops up and says, do you want to open this application? You click Open Zoom US. That will throw you back into the desktop program, which now looks like this. So this is a signed in 
Zoom that's installed to your computer. The top little thing right here is um, uh, the little, your preferences menu. And when you click on this, you'll notice that it has linked my VT email address as my login, and it says Pro right here. That's and again, something that might be different on a PC is instead of seeing the word Pro here, you see the word Licensed. Those are the same, um, they mean the same thing. So you'll either see the word Pro or you'll either see the word Licensed. Um, and either one is perfectly fine there. They mean the same thing. Uh, for the rest of the video, I'll be referencing the Pro language because on my Mac, that's what uh, the program says is Pro. But Licensed like this, that is exactly the same thing as Pro. If you somehow get to this point and it does not say Pro right here, then uh, you have not linked it successfully to your VT account. And then that'll limit you on those other ways I was saying um, in terms of what you can use it for. So once we're in here, you, you're automatically assigned this personal meeting ID. That's kind of like just your, your basic default. They give you a room. They set up one so you can just get started. What I like to do is set up different rooms for different things so that I can keep track of which links I'm giving to which people. But you can reuse a link as long as you, as many times as you want. So for example, if I'm teaching a class, and I'm, I'm gonna actually go ahead and set this up right here, I'm gonna hit the little plus button to schedule a meeting. The topic is going to be, um, so this is a class that I'm teaching, so I'll just go ahead and click this on here. This is the title that I want to give it. Oh, good grief. I seem to be having trouble with recording this dumb thing. I want to get out of this. Okay. Um, I'm really sorry about that. I accidentally clicked something. So I'm going to schedule this meeting, Math Ed Dispositions. This is a class that I'm co-teaching right now, so I actually need to set this up. I, you can set up a specific time here. I find that to be fairly restrictive, so I just ignore that. And for every single meeting that I set, I just ignore this and I hit recurring meeting. Okay. What that allows me to do is it sets up the room and then I can use it whenever I want for anything. If you set up those times, it's going to only allow you to log into that room from that specific time to this specific time. So like if you want to log in early to get ready for class or if you want to stay late or if you want, if you have a question, if a student has a question and you just want to say, okay, just log into the Zoom classroom and I'll meet you there and we'll talk about it. Having this set up as a recurring meeting is really important. The meeting ID, you can either assign it to your personal meeting ID, which I find gets kind of messy sometimes because it conflates like two different purposes. If you want to use your room, your personal room for like office hours and then have a classroom to be separate. So I just have it generate the meeting ID automatically. The meeting ID is going to be a number. It looks, it'll look like this. It'll be a number that you can reuse over and over again. Um, I don't recommend requiring a meeting password because then you run into the risk of like people forgetting the password or not having it to log in um, or it just adds this extra layer of complication. However, if you are concerned about other people getting the link, anybody with the link can log in. If you're concerned about somebody getting the link and coming into class, which in my experience has never happened to me, then you can re require a password. Um, set your video. I put it to on for everything. I require my students when they're in class with me, I require everybody to have their video on because it creates a little gallery like list of cameras over here and I can see everybody easily. I've done this for several years now and it works really well. Um, audio, telephone and computer audio is what I recommend. The reason for that is that if somebody is stuck out like in the car or something and is trying to get to their computer, they can actually call in like an old fashioned conference call. This system will give you a, a call in number and then they just type in the meeting ID that this generates up here 
and they can call in from the car or use the Zoom app from the car. It's really nice just to have that extra um, flexibility. Even with having the Zoom app that can video in, I have actually had students before who just felt more comfortable calling in, maybe using their car Bluetooth and calling in using the dial-in number. So it's nice to have that um, flexibility. So then um, we are going to, um, we can just use this as teaching right here, purpose, select from dropdown is teaching. I think Virginia Tech makes you choose that. So um, we'll go ahead and schedule this, okay? Once it's done scheduling, it's going to ask me if I want to add it to my calendar, which I don't right now. So what it does is it, it puts it right here. And if you notice, I now have a nine-digit meeting ID number, 355-369-736. That is the meeting ID for my math ed dispositions class. So there's a couple of ways that you can activate this. You can click on, the, so here's my personal meeting room. I, I would use that for like office hours, you know, or something like that. Or if I just had to quickly meet with somebody, I could use it for that. Here's the Math Ed Dispositions class. As the instructor that it's in my list right here, I can just go ahead and start this. Okay, so once we're in the Zoom room, this is what it looks like and um, I clicked on manage participants over here what that does is it lists out everybody that's in the room so I can see everyone over here on this on this list right here okay and then um, I can uh, I can if I follow my cursor now I can mute people I can excuse me I can mute myself as the host if you notice right here it says host I can mute other people that are in the room if I want to mute everybody I can mute all I can unmute all this is really important if you have lots of people in the room because you're gonna have 20 different people with 20 different microphones connected and people are gonna have um, background noise in their house that's gonna been then feed out to the whole classroom so it gets really messy so it's really uh, um, uh, annoying if you're asking people nicely please mute your microphones and of course people are ignoring you so you can easily click mute all right here and if you mute all it just silences everybody's microphone including yourself so then you have to unmute yourself so for example if I hit mute all and then I go over and unmute myself notice this goes mute unmute like that I can do the same thing with my video if I click this little up carrot right here I have a list of all of my microphone devices I can switch to. I have a list of all my videos. I have three cameras plugged into my computer right now just because I have them here because I've done this. I do a lot of things like this. I can switch to say for example um, this one right here. This is my document camera so now I'm like looking at, let me get my focus to be right. Come on. Let's focus. There we go. Um, I can um, use a document camera here and I can write on the document camera like this or I can show you like a book if you, oh this is, well I don't know why this is in reverse. I have to check that out. I did not plan for this video very well, obviously, but you can use um, document cameras. I have a, this plugged in. I can go back to my, go back to my regular camera here. A um, couple of things I want to show you. Uh, just keep in mind the mute all because you you'll will have students who won't realize that they're the ones that are messing up everybody's audio. So if you just hit mute all and then unmute yourself again, you can start talking. Um, Another thing I notice students do a lot is that they you'll call on somebody and um, also the um, um, gallery with everybody's pictures, if I had more people in the room, would show up over here. Um, you can tell with these little icons up here who has audio and who has video connected. If somebody has a little slash through their video, then that means that they have their camera turned off and you can ask them to turn it on so that you can see their beautiful face. Um, 
You also have uh, chat right here. If you click on chat, chat is a, like a just a text, a running text box. Uh, if you want to send a link out to the class, like you know, I could, and um, and so on and so forth. So um, the chat is useful. You can also record right here. You can click record. Or you can record uh, the meeting if you want to do that. I recommend recording it to the cloud because if you record it to your computer, it the files become very, very, very large, especially if it's like a three hour class, right? So then you'll have this massive video file on your computer and it's kind of like, well, what do I do with this? Do I upload it to YouTube? What do I do? If you record it to the cloud, it goes back to the Zoom server and then they give you a link that you can share to people to watch it again if, if somebody missed class or, or what have you. I don't record classes a lot just because, um, you know, my attendance policies, things like that. So that's up to you if you want to use that. You can also, um, I don't use the closed caption button very much. And I, you can use polling. That's just like a built in, you know, like poll anywhere type of feature. You can just do a quick survey or whatever. Um, you can also use these yes and no buttons. Um, uh, if you're asking people, if they've done, you know, have you completed the assignment, everybody clicks a little yes, and then it shows up in your list right here. Of course, this would be populated with, this little list right here would be populated with all of your people that are in there. So you can just visually check and see if everybody has clicked yes, or if somebody clicked no, it's a little red X. That people, students can also give you feedback, like if you, if you ask like, does everybody understand this concept? You can click thumbs up and then you can just check it out and see if everybody got, gave you a thumbs up um, and then there's a couple of these other things like uh, a way like if I if we take a break in the middle of class I might put a way up just to let people know that I've stepped away from the computer um, uh, the little coffee cup means I need a break and so these it, clapping you know what it could be kind of fun just to interact with your students with these little buttons you as the instructor or as the host can clear everything by this clear all button that will clear everybody's little icons you can also and if I had somebody else in here right now in this let me get, yeah there if I had somebody else in here I could assign somebody else to be a co-host so the co-host would have all the same privileges and um, powers inside the software that the host does. So you can assign co-hosts. Or the other thing you might want to do is if somebody, if you have a student that's presenting in class, you can assign them to be a co-host and then they can control the whole classroom for the time that they're presenting, etc. You know, that sort of a thing. Um, so that's helpful. Um, breakout rooms, if you click breakout rooms, you can assign participants into so many rooms. This is just like a divisibility kind of question. So if you have 12 people in the room, and it will include uh, yourself, I think, I just have to check it out. You can uh, tell it how many rooms you want to break it into. So if I have 12 people and I set four rooms, then of course each person, each room is going to get three people. I can also manually assign the rooms. If I know that specific people have to be together, I can just manually do it and then it'll let me choose, you know, I can pick these people go to this room and then I go through these people go to that room, so on and so forth. So you can create that and then you create breakout rooms um, and this is where you assign people to different rooms. It will automatically do it or you can manually do it um, by assigning and then rearranging people here. And then once you've assigned people, of course, I can't do this right now because I don't have anybody in the room with me here. But once I've assigned everybody, it'll list everybody out like um, this heading is going to have, you know, people in the room one, room two, room three. It'll just list it all out there like a roster. And then when I'm ready, I just hit the bottom here. I hit open all rooms and it sends everybody out to different breakout rooms so that they can work individually with that group. And then during those breakout rooms, you have the ability to switch and all the hosts have the ability to switch in between any room that they want at any time to check in on people, to ask them how they're doing, etc., whatever. 
Um, you can also send a message, a broadcast message to all rooms. It will pop up in every room as a little text box and it'll say message from instructor, you know, and you can say um, I'll, we're going to come back together in two minutes. And then that the way everybody knows that in two minutes you're going to click close rooms and when you click close rooms it brings everybody back together into the main room so it's pretty neat to do that the only critique that I have of zoom and I've used other software uh, before zoom I used Adobe Connect which is pretty much outdated at this point but one critique that I have of zoom is that let's say I have something on the screen right here so I'm gonna like share um, the share button is where you choose what you're going to share. So I'll click share and then um, it allows me to choose my desktop or whatever files I have open. Um, I had a little, this is just a fake little, uh, notice I have a fake little um, uh, PowerPoint right here. So I can hit share and I can hit Microsoft PowerPoint and it'll just share the PowerPoint. If I hit desktop, then it is going to share everything on my desktop. So the whole class can see my entire computer screen or I can just hit PowerPoint or share one particular thing and it will just share that one particular thing. So like if I do this, oh, it's gonna ask me to change this stuff real quick so I'll, I won't do that but depending on if you want to share your whole screen or just one specific app you can do that um, the one critique about zoom that I have is that if I'm sharing let's say I'm sharing this PowerPoint right and this is the only thing that you can see on the on the screen when I go into breakout rooms it does not transfer that file to the breakout rooms the breakout rooms have their own control over what is shown in each little room, each breakout room. So what you have to do ahead of time is you have to post the PowerPoint to Canvas or what have you. You have to post the actual files and resources online and you have to tell students at the beginning of class, make sure you download the PowerPoint now because we're going to use it during class. So every student has to have their own individual copies of the files because when you go out to the breakout rooms then one person in each breakout room is going to have to volunteer to share their screen to make the PowerPoint show back up on the screen in the breakout room. So if I had four breakout rooms with three people each let's say then when I create those breakout rooms there's going to be four mini miniature rooms that are created and all of them are going to have a blank screen and so one person in each of those rooms is going to have to volunteer say oh I'll be the one to pull up PowerPoint in this room in this room in this room in this room so you'll have to have four people somebody and it usually it's this is not a problem students are always willing to do this it's just a logistical kind of a road bump I, I wish that it was smoother I wish that you could just transfer the screen to all the breakout rooms but zoom doesn't do that so that's the only critique that I have of zoom um, if that has changed it has been in a new version that I don't know about yet and the last class that I taught on zoom was last summer so um, it may have updated if that's the case then I would be happy to know about that so anyway, I think that that um, pretty much cl uh, finishes everything that I want to say. I will mention, uh, oh, and sharing. Let's, let's talk about sharing the meeting ID. Um, when you leave a meeting, don't click end meeting. Just, just click the little red button and click close. Just click leave the meeting, right? Because you want to leave this room open for every, forever, if you click end meeting, it's going to close that meeting ID down and then you'll have to create a new one. And I'll tell you that creating a new link and sending out a new meeting ID every week is really confusing for students. So what you can do on your syllabus is just, you know, instead of putting, like we have classroom location, like, you know, McBride Hall 223 or whatever, in that meeting ID, meeting location for the on the syllabus, you can just put your Zoom number. 
you can say zoom ID 355, whatever it was, or you can just put the URL. So if you click leave meeting, it's going to leave the meeting open for you to use again in the future. So let's go ahead and do that. And then I want to just talk quickly about the um, sharing the link. So there's two ways that are useful for um, sharing a Zoom link. If you click copy invitation, you can just copy and paste this into an email email and send to people. There's a lot of information on here that's kind of useless. Like I'm not, I don't think anybody is going to be in India that's going to be, you know, joining on an H.323 server. You know, I don't think that that's going to work for people. So Skype for business people can also join in. I don't know that anybody is going to use Skype. I think in academia, pretty much everybody uses Zoom now. So in the, in, in the, all of this stuff that's listed right here, there's two things that I find to be useful. One is the meeting ID right here. That's just the meeting ID number. And then the second is this link right here. That is the link that you could put in your syllabus or you could email to people and say, just click this link. Because for the students, they don't have to have this Zoom program installed. I recommend that they do because then if they need to share PowerPoints or files or share their screen or whatever, the, the, the downloaded client works really well. So I recommend that I just, I just tell everybody, I mean, they don't, it, you, students don't have to do this they can still log in using the website, but I recommend that all my students just have it. So I just tell everybody to just download the program and just use the meeting ID. So in this, so the, the then uh, you just need the code right here, just the number. Because what you can do is you can go um, up here to Zoom. Uh, this I'm now, this is imagine that I'm a student, okay? And my meeting ID is 3553697736. Okay, so I know that I'm a student. I need to join this class. I just go here to join meeting, and it pops up with this little box, right? Join meeting. And then I just type in 3553697736 because that's the number that my professor sent to me. And I put my name right here, and I'll just change it to Alex Student, just so we know. Oh God, why does this keep doing this? Oh, for God's sake. Yes. Okay. Um, okay, I'm just going to change my name to Alex Student for the sake of the illustration. And then um, Notice that the default right here is that audio is turned on and video is turned on because we set that when we made the meeting preferences. So now I can just click join. It's going to join the meeting and it'll pop up. It'll pop up this screen that looks very similar to what I just saw as the instructor. I can still click manage participants. I still have all of these same controls, but um, it still is treating me as the host because I'm logged in as my account. Um, if I was not logged in, it would treat me as a participant and I wouldn't have all the host controls. Um, and so that's what your students will see when they sign in. So uh, like I said, there are two ways to go about um, sharing the location. You can share the, the link and you can share just the meeting ID. Either way, if the student has the program installed, the Zoom client installed on their computer, either of those avenues will link them back to this in the computer program. So it's a pretty smooth program to use. I like that uh, it kind of has intuition built into it so that it's not really confusing for students to use. It's a fairly modern um, user interface design, pretty modern. Uh, software intuition and things like that. So I like that about Zoom. So I hope that's helpful. Please let me know if you have any other questions. Okay. Um, you can send me an email or just uh, get in touch. We can even Zoom. All right. Good luck, everyone.